Hello and welcome again. So we'll start uh, this uh, sequence of videos uh, with an introduction to one-way functions. Now, one-way functions are an important concept in uh, cryptography. In particular, some of the uh, encryption uh, methods that we gonna see later and the one we just saw, which was the RSA, is based on an idea of a one-way function. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, background uh, about what the why it's important to study one way functions and then we'll talk a little bit more about what they are in particular I think in this video I could cover up to what functions are uh, and from there we can see what a one way function is so as I wrote here the RSA the algorithm we just study is based on the hardness of factoring large integers now hardness Hardness means that it is difficult to factor large integers with techniques that we have today, even uh, with large computers. So I, I think I mentioned this uh, actually several times. This integer factorization, which is on which RSA is based, so basically the the security of the RSA is actually based on on that and some other things. Uh, integer factorization is the one-way function of the RSA. And let me explain what that means here. Now, I'm not gonna give you the definition right now of a one-way function is, but I'm gonna be give you a basic idea of what it is. In particular, I'm gonna give you the idea of uh, what comes from the RSA. So what is the, what's the idea for the RSA? The first thing we have to do is, you, of course, you choose two primes, and when you multiply them, you get the modulus, uh, which is part of the public key. Now, uh, this is the idea about one-way function. This arrow that I'm putting here is the operation I'm gonna do. When I have two, when I choose two positive uh, prime numbers, which you remember that are chosen to be large, multiplication is not a hard thing to do. Um, this could be really large numbers and that multiplication will not take that much time to do. Now, the other way around, which is the one on which the RSA is based, is that going backwards is, let's say, difficult or hard. Meaning that this, if somebody gives you the number n, it will be difficult to factor that n or to come back with p and q are. So this is the basic idea of one-way function. The basic idea of one-way function is one way is, let's say, easy to compute and the other way is difficult to compute. So that's the idea of one-way function. One way is easy, that's why it's called one way. So one way is easy to compute. Going backwards is what is difficult. And the idea of the RSA is that it's based on this idea of being difficult in this direction. So we have a one-way function of the RSA. So that's the basic idea. Now, the reason we're gonna study more a little bit of one-way functions and go into the details of that is that most non-RSA public key algorithms are based on one-way functions. Not exactly the same we had here for the RSA, but some other one-way functions. So, so it's better we talk about this uh, very important idea in cryptography now. Now, to talk about what one-way functions are, we have to talk about first about what functions are. Now, if you took a class on discrete mathematics or any other math class, maybe calculus or something like that, you probably know what a function is. But let's recall what that is, uh, just for the uh, sake of being clear on all the concepts. So let's do a little bit of a background of what a functions are. Okay, what is a function? So I'm going to define the term function here. The function, a function is actually... You can think about it three things. It's composed of three main things. Two of them are sets, collections of elements. Two sets A and B, and a rule that says how to transform each element in A to precisely one, and this is important, to precisely one element in B. Okay, what is that idea? I'm gonna draw a picture here. So a function, you can think about a function is a machine that takes input and gives you output. The machine takes certain kinds of input and it gives you certain kinds of output. And then what machine does is that rule that is here. So 
you can think about it this way. So you have the input Sergio machine here, which is a collection of some elements. Let's just call them for the time being, let's call them inputs. You give an input to the machine, the machine is gonna transform this element into an output, which you're gonna call f of a. A parenthesis a is the output that comes from the input a. So this is gonna be my collection of outputs. So my collection of outputs is gonna live here in this set. All right. Uh, the standard notation that we're gonna use for for function is we're gonna say f colon a and says a, a transform into b. Now, again, to think about what the functions are, think about this as a machine. So, for example, a copying machine. The input of a copying machine will be a paper. The action is what the machine actually does to that input, which is printing something on it, and the output should be like a piece of paper that is already printed. So think about it like that. This machine takes certain kinds of inputs. If you think about the example of the copy machine, the input of a copy machine, of course, is paper. Uh, and you wouldn't put, like for example, water in the a copy machine and think that you're gonna get out something out of it. So that's basically the idea. So a function has inputs and outputs which have to be described within the function and also some rule of transformation. So let's see some example uh, here. So let's say I have my collection of inputs. It's gonna be a collection of elements. In this case, it's gonna be finite, but it doesn't have to be. So I have the letters A, B, and C, for example. In my collection, where my outputs will live will be just the numbers from one through four. The rule can be specified in many ways. One way to specify the rules is say exactly what the function does to each one single element. So for example, the rule that I'm applying from A to B is saying that F of A, meaning that A will transform the input A into the input three, and the same thing for the other ones. Now remember one thing that is important of a function, I'm gonna come back here to the picture, is this part, I'm gonna highlight it here. This is precisely one element in B. So this that I'm gonna write down now, that this doesn't happen in function. So I cannot have, let's say for example, one input having two outputs at the same time. So I put something in the function, one thing has to come out, not two. So that's exactly what has to happen in a function. Now, if you see a situation like this, where one input produces two different outputs, that's not a function. That's called a relation, but it's not a function. So that's exactly uh, the, dif the difference or the meaning of what precisely one element in B uh, means there. All right. So, and that's what happens here. So if I actually uh, go ahead and draw what this means in terms of my picture, this is what's called the Venn diagrams. I have my inputs here, which is R, A, B, and C. My out, my collection of apples will live in this one, two, three, four. So A will be transformed into three, B into one, and C into two, as the uh, rule says right here. Now, I'm gonna introduce a notation here, and it is this, when I write down I, capital I, M of F. That is the collection of all the images in B. Images are all the, all possible outputs when you take into account all possible inputs. So for outputs here, I only get one, two, and three. Four is not an image. It does not come from any element in A. So that's not considered an image. So the image of f is all collection of all the possible outputs with all possible inputs so in this case it will be just the collection one two and three so that's basically just a, a recall of discrete mathematics basically okay let's see an, another example let's say for example i have now my collection a is my collection of inputs remember so it's going to be the numbers all from one to ten and my collection of b is where my inputs will will be where my impulse will land, exactly. So let's take, for example, natural numbers. Now, sometimes when someone defines a function, they will tell you what the inputs are and they will just ignore this part, but they will tell you the formula or the mathematical description of the rule, what the rule does to the inputs. And then it will be clear 
what will be the collection where will the collection uh, be in that for that particular function will be so in this case what I have is is this definition that I have here is different from the one that I have above because the one that I had here I said exactly what f does to each input in this case I just give it the general rule so the general rule f of x meaning that I'm gonna transform this input x by the rule f and what the rule does is whatever it says here so in this case is this is just an example is I take x to the fourth power and I take the remainder modulo 11 this is what we call the mathematical description of the rule now if I want to know exactly what uh, the function does to each of the elements 1 2 through 10 then I just have to basically just plug in the x by whatever the number I'm trying to compute so I did this already so let's say for example we'll look at let's say f of 4 so that's the output f of 4 is the image of 4 or is the output that comes from the input 4 so f of 4 will be just take 4 to the 4 power so just x is here 4 to the 4 power modulo 11 and if you actually go ahead and do this computation you get the number 3 similar for 5 is just 5 to the 4 and then take modulo 11 which you get here is 9 okay and exactly for all the others exactly the same so the image of this function will be just the collection of all the outputs so I just have to look at the outputs that are here and make a list of them you see there's a repetition of the 9 here you don't have to repeat numbers in this collection here it's just a collection it's a set it's just an order and you don't put repetitions just because it's not necessary so that's basically uh, what a function is so a function is just remember think about it as a machine that takes input and gives you output and of course if you have written functions in Java or any other language is almost exactly the same thing it's almost exactly the same thing so in the next video what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about a little bit specifics of certain kinds of functions there are functions but they have some other characteristics that are a little bit more special and then uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to define what a one-way function is so I will see you in the next video